Hello, Mighty Companion. This is Earl Purdy, and I want to welcome you to Facebook Live, A Course in Miracles. And we're going to talk about the cloud of guilt. We're going to talk about how do you get rid of guilt? What is guilt? Where is it coming from? How do you get rid of it? How do you change it? We're going to be talking about that, and that's powerful, and that will be healing for us here on A Course in Miracles on Facebook Live with Earl Purdy. All right, so let's, hit, let's, let's get started with a song from our brother John Christmas. And it's called, I'm Not a Victim of the World I See. And you can get his music at johnchristmas.com. Here we go. I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim of the world I see. and miracles here on Facebook Live. We're going to be talking about the cloud of guilt and how to get rid of it. We're going to be on page 260, 260, 260 in the Course in Miracles text. The Foundation for Inner Peace version of A Course in Miracles, page 260, The Cloud of Guilt. I'm not a victim of the North, I'm not a victim of the South. I am the divine repetition teacher. I am the truth remembrance teacher. I'm all about remembering what the Course in Miracles is saying because the Course in Miracles says the most important thing you can do is remember what it's saying. Not analyzing what it's saying, but remembering what it's saying. I'm not a victim, not a victim of the world I see. I'm of the world I see Cause what's happening now Is what I've done to me Oh yeah Oh Lord, I'm messing All right, I love that song That's a Course in Miracles workbook lesson, by the way It's called I Am Not a Victim of the World I See Welcome, 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 welcome I love having an opportunity to share the Course in Miracles with my mighty companion. I've been teaching and studying the Course in Miracles for 40 years because it has made such a positive difference in me and in my life. And over 35 years ago, I decided to teach the Course in Miracles full time, that that's what I would do. That was my calling, that that was what I was here on the planet to do. 
So I'm now in my 41st, 41st year of sharing A Course in Miracles. And A Course in Miracles teaches that the purpose of a relationship is to save time. So I'm here to save you time. I did 40 years for you, so that saves you 40 years right there. Now, The Course in Miracles has its own rules. It has its own guidelines for how to study The Course in Miracles. It has its own guidelines for how to study The Course in Miracles. And I'm going to give you these guidelines because it makes all the difference in the world when you're listening to The Course in Miracles. The Course in Miracles says you need to remember only this. You need to remember only this. Remember only what? That you need not believe the ideas. You need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. What did I say? Some of the ideas you may actively resist. Some of the ideas you may actively resist some of the ideas. You may actively resist some of the ideas. You may have some active resistance to some of these ideas. Some of these ideas you may actively resist. Some of the ideas from A Course in Miracles you may find hard to believe. Some of the ideas you may find hard to believe. You may find some of the things that I share from A Course in Miracles, you may find them hard to believe. Other things that I say from A Course in Miracles, you may be startled by. So some of the ideas may startle you. Some of the things I say may startle you. Some of the things I say may startle you. You are not asked to judge the ideas at all. You are not being asked to analyze the ideas at all. Their use, using the ideas in the Course in Miracles will give you the meaning. Their use will give the ideas meaning to you. Their use will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. That's what the Course in Miracles says right in at the beginning of the workbook in A Course in Miracles, which I take as being actually the instructions for really learning A Course in Miracles. And by the way, a miracle is a correct perception. A miracle is a loving thought. A miracle is, a, is an expression of love. Uh, a Course in Miracles says a miracle is a true perception. It's a correct perception. It's an expression of love. It's, a, it's an expression, expression of truth. So I love to substitute some of, the, some of the Course in Miracles definitions for some of the terms that it uses. And we're going to be in the cloud of guilt on page 260. So remember, so I want to emphasize again that our goal is to remember, hear it and remember it. So here we go. So if there's a such thing as God... If there's a such thing as having a higher power, if you actually were created by something, then what's hiding God from you? What's, what's hiding love from you? What's hiding the Father from you? What's hiding God from you? What's hiding God from you? What, what hides love from you? The Course answers that question because I teach in a question and answer format. Okay, here we go. There's only one thing hiding God from you. And that is guilt. It says right here, guilt remains the only thing that hides the father. For guilt is the attack upon his son. So, the only thing that hides God from you is guilt. Do you know that guilt is an attack? Guilt is an attack upon God's child. 
you are God's child. When you feel guilty, you're attacking yourself. When you feel guilty, you are attacking yourself. Whenever you're feeling guilty, whenever you're thinking guilty thoughts, you are attacking yourself. When you do things that make you feel guilty, or I put it this way, when you do things that you make yourself feel guilty about, when you do things that you make yourself feel guilty about, that hides God from you, that hides love from you. Do you know that the Course in Miracles is only talking about what love is and what fear is? It's trying to teach us the difference between love and fear. It's also, the Course in Miracles is trying to make us aware of the blocks to love in us and to have those blocks to love removed. So it's not about analyzing the Course in Miracles and feeling like you understand everything it says. What you want to do is remember. So what is it you want to remember? You want to remember that guilt is the only thing that hides love from you. And every time you feel guilty, you are hurting and attacking yourself. Guilt is an attack upon yourself. When you're feeling guilty, you are attacking yourself. And it hides love from you, God from you. So who are the people that condemn? Who are the people that condemn? The guilty. The, it, it, anybody that condemns is someone who thinks they are guilty according to A Course in Miracles. So when you are in a mood to condemn somebody, just say to yourself, right now I'm feeling guilty about something. How do I know I'm feeling guilty about something? Because I'm ready to condemn someone or I'm ready to condemn myself. If you condemn yourself, if you condemn yourself, then you believe you're guilty. You have guilt. If you condemn yourself, if you condemn anyone else, then you believe you are guilty. The Course says, the guilty always condemn. The guilty always condemn. So who's the, who is it that's always condemning? Someone that's guilty. And the, and the Course in Miracles says, and once you start condemning because you feel guilty, then you will still condemn. And what's happening to you when you are condemning someone else or condemning yourself? What are you doing to your future? Where the court says, when you condemn yourself and condemn someone else and you feel guilty, you're linking the future to the past. You're feeling guilty because you think you did something in the past. And so you believe you're going to be punished for what you've done in the future. So guilt links your past to your future. When you focus on what you think you've done in the past that makes you feel guilty, you're linking the future to the past and you're going to create a situation where you punish yourself for it in the future. And that is the law of the ego. See, the rule of fear, the rule of the ego is you keep on thinking about your past in the present and then you keep projecting what you have experienced in the past into the future and then you relive it again. So if you have a fearful mind, a guilty mind, an angry mind, if you think you are separate from people, if you think you are separate from everything, if you feel guilty, then there is a part of you that's going to try to punish you in the future for what you think you did in the past. So what is it that keeps love from coming into your life right now, which is light? What keeps light from coming into your life? Well, the court says fidel fidelity to this law. What law? The law of feeling guilty. And since I feel guilty, I'm going to judge and condemn everyone else. Uh, the law of linking my past to my future, thinking that just because something went a certain way in the past, it's got to go that way in the future. That is fidelity to a law. 
but that law will cause you fear. That law will cause you pain. So if you keep thinking about what you've done in the past that you think you deserve to be punished for or that was something that you're condemning yourself about, then you are refusing to let love in. You are refusing to let love in to your life. You're refusing to let love into your life if you're always thinking about what you've done to condemn yourself in the past and how you might be punished for it in the future or if you are condemning someone else thinking about what they what you think they did to you in the past and then you're linking that to your future that that might happen to you in the future that keeps light from coming in that's what keeps the love from coming in that's what keeps the joy from coming into your experience right now and if you keep focusing on the things that make you unhappy or that you think you've done wrong from the past, then you are forbidding yourself to wake up to the love that you are. Are you forbidding yourself to wake up? Are you forbidding yourself to wake up? What do I mean by you forbidding yourself to wake up? I'm talking about are you constantly thinking about things that you think has happened to you in the past? And then you are projecting that something bad could happen in the future or you could go through it again in the future uh, or you could be punished in the future. Then you are forbidding yourself to wake up. Stop forbidding yourself to wake up. Stop forbidding yourself to wake up. Stop forbidding yourself to wake up. Do you know that your ego's laws are strict? So what is the ego? The ego is the laws of fear. The ego is the part of you that thinks you're separate from everything and everybody. The ego is the thought you have in your mind that you are separate and different from everybody else. The ego is the part of your mind that believes in fear. It's the part of your mind that believes in anger and guilt and grievances. That part of your mind is called the ego. Now, are you aware that the laws of the ego, the laws of fear, the laws of pain, the laws of guilt are strict? And so when you break one of your guilty rules, when you do something that you feel guilty about, that you think is bad, then there's a part of your mind that wants to severely punish you when you break its laws. There's a part of your mind that is ruled by fear and guilt. And that part of you wants to punish you whenever you do whatever that part of you thinks is wrong. Do you know there's a part of you that punishes you when you do the things you think are wrong, you know, the Course in Miracles says, therefore, what do you do? The court says, therefore, give no, obe no obedience to the laws of the ego, which is do not give any obedience to the laws of fear. Don't obey your fear. Don't obey your fear. Don't obey your fear. What does that mean? As much as possible, whatever you do, don't do it from fear. So the Course says, therefore, give no obedience to the ego's laws. Don't obey the laws of guilt. Don't, don't obey the laws of fear. Don't obey the laws of guilt. Don't obey the laws of fear. Because when you obey the laws of the ego, do you know that you are obeying the laws of punishment? So when you obey, when you listen to the part of your mind that feels anger, guilt, and grievances, when you listen to that part of your mind, you are obeying the laws of punishment. So when you, when you obey the anger in your mind, the guilt in your mind, the judgment in your mind, you don't know it, but you are actually causing pain for yourself. You are causing punishment for yourself. The course calls that the laws of punishment. The ego's laws are strict and breaches are severely punished. 
Therefore, give no obedience, give no obedience to the ego's laws, for the ego's laws are the laws of punishment. The laws of guilt are the laws of punishment. And those who follow the laws of guilt, those who follow the laws of fear, do you know that those who follow the laws of guilt, those who follow the laws of the ego, believe that they are guilty? So whoever obeys the rules of fear and guilt and anger, those people who think like that, they are asking for punishment. People who are full of fear and anger and guilt believe they are guilty. According to the Course in Miracles, those who obey the laws of fear, the, the laws of separation, those people are guilty in their minds. And so those people condemn. So who is it that condemns others? Those who believe they are guilty. Who are those who condemn others? Those who want to be punished themselves. So people who want to be punished themselves are people who condemn others. So when you are condemning someone, just be aware that you are asking for punishment to come to you. That's what you need to remember, that what you give is what you are going to receive. So first you have to feel guilty about something. Then when the person feels guilty about something, then they, you can tell because at that point they start condemning everybody else around them. So when you condemn everybody else around you, when a person condemns everybody else around them, they are obeying the laws of punishment. So when you obey the rules of punishment, punishment comes to you. Pain comes to you. Unhappiness comes to you. Sickness comes to you. Lack comes to you. Loneliness comes to you. So you need to have an intervention. You need to have an intervention if you're a person that's full of anger and guilt and grievances. So the Course in Miracles says, between the future and the past. What's between the future and the past? Well, you need to let the laws of God intervene. You need to let the laws of love and truth intervene. Now, what does that mean, Earl, when you say, I need to let the laws of love and truth intervene? Well, there's your past and then there's your future. But you need to let some truth intervene between your past and your future. You need, to let, you need to have some love come between your past and future. You need to let love come between your past over here, your future over there. And you need to let love come between your past and your future. You need to let love, truth come between what you think happened to you in the past and what you are anticipating happening to you in the future. You need to let the laws of God intervene. You need to let the rules of love intervene right now. Between your past and your future, let the rules of love intervene. Do you want to free yourself? Do you want to free yourself? Okay, if you want to free yourself, what do you do? Well, right here and right now, which is between the past and future, right here and right now is between the past and the future. So right here and right now, you need to let the laws of love intervene. You need to let the laws of, of God intervene, okay? Then the Course in Miracles says, if you want to free yourself. Now, if you don't want to free yourself, then don't let the laws of love intervene. But if you want to free yourself, you got to let some new rules intervene. A law is a rule. A law is a rule. So the laws of God is the same as saying the rules of God. God is love. So you're talking about the rules of love. We, you have to let the rules of love come in. If you want to have a future different from the past, you must do what? You must let the rules of love intervene. The laws of God intervene. Now, atonement stands between the past and the future. Your, your healing stands between the past and the future. The solution is between the past and the future. The past is gone. The future is not yet. So if you're going to be healed, then you have to be healed when? You've got to be healed right now. So atonement, your healing, stands between the past and the future. And, and, and your atonement, the thing that will free you, the thing that will free you from pain, the thing that will free you from guilt, the atonement, the undoing of every mistake that you've ever made, that's called the atonement. 
Okay, so the atonement, the undoing of every guilt, the undoing of every mistake you've ever made, stands between the past and the future. And the answer is like a lamp shining so brightly. The truth is like a lamp shining brightly. The truth is like a lamp that's shining brightly. So brightly that the chain of fear and guilt in which you have bound yourself will disappear. See that picture. The Course in Miracles says you are bound in guilt chains, fear chains, past chains, anger chains. Picture it. Picture it. Picture yourself being bound by chains. Well, whenever you are condemning yourself, whenever you're condemning anyone else, whenever you are thinking thoughts of your guilt or thinking thoughts of being sinful, you have chains of darkness and fear all around yourself. So you need the light. You need the truth that will cause your guilt to disappear, your anger to disappear. You need the lamp, the light, the truth, the love that will make all your limitations disappear. That, don't you want that? Don't you want the atonement? Don't you want the correction of your error? Don't you want the release from guilt? Isn't that what you want? Don't you want to be released from any kind of lack or sickness or fear? Well, if you do, then you need to hear the truth. You need to hear loving thoughts. You need to hear thoughts of joy. You need to hear thoughts of power. You need to hear thoughts of forgiveness because that will cause all of your problems in your perception to disappear. Okay. Whew. So if you want to undo your ego, what does it take to undo the ego? What does it take to undo fear? What does it take to undo worry? What does it take to undo hatred? What does it take to undo sickness? What does it take to undo it? What does it take to undo every problem that you think you have? What does it take to undo loneliness? What does it take to undo separation? Would you like to know that? Release from guilt. Release from guilt is the whole undoing of the ego. Release from guilt is the whole undoing of the ego. Release from guilt is the undoing of the ego. Release from guilt is the undoing of fear. Release from guilt is the undoing of fear. Release from guilt is the undoing of fear. Release from guilt is the undoing of the ego. Is release from guilt is the undoing of the ego. Release from guilt is the undoing of the ego. Release from guilt is the undoing of fear. Release from guilt is the undoing of fear. Release from guilt is the undoing of sickness. Release from guilt is the undoing of sickness is the release from guilt. Release from guilt is the undoing of the ego. If you want to undo your ego, if you want to undo your ego, if you want to undo your fear, if you want to undo your lack, if you want to undo any separation, if you want to undo condemnation, if you want to undo unhappiness, what do you release? What will you work on releasing? What will be the most important thing that you release? You must release guilt. Nobody's asking you to be a sociopath. So you don't need guilt to do what's right. It doesn't, you don't have to feel guilty to do the right thing. So if you make a mistake, if you do something that you think has been harmful or hurtful to something or someone, that was a mistake. It was a mistake to do something unloving. So all you have to do is work on getting rid of the guilt because in getting rid of the guilt, you'll get rid of the part of yourself that thinks you deserve to be punished. Do you know that if you get rid of the part of yourself that thinks you deserve to be punished, then you stop putting yourself in situations or creating situations that cause you pain? You would stop attracting and drawing situations to you that cause you pain in your perception if you learned how to let go of guilt. The release from guilt is the undoing of the ego. So how do you do that? What is one of the first rules if you want to release yourself and others from guilt, 
and therefore release yourself from pain and release yourself from lack? What is the first thing that you must do if you want to free yourself from pain, if you want to free yourself from unhappiness, if you want to free yourself from loneliness? What is the first thing that you would do? You would make no one fearful. So the first thing you would do if you really want to let go of guilt is to stop making people afraid of you. Stop trying to frighten people with your anger and your upset. Don't make anyone afraid. Don't make anyone afraid of you. Try not to make anyone afraid of you. Try not to frighten anyone. If you want to release yourself from guilt, if you want to have prosperity and abundance, if you want to have health and happiness, make no one fearful. Make no one fearful. Don't be trying to frighten people with anger and upset because that other person's guilt is your guilt. What you're seeing in other people is what's in your own mind. So by obeying your angry mind's harsh commandments, by obeying your ego's commandments, by obeying your negative thoughts, you bring the ego's condemnation on yourself. When you attack others, you bring attack upon yourself. You, you bring fear upon yourself. That's just the truth. You don't have to understand that. That's just the way it is. So you won't escape the punishment. You won't escape the punishment that your ego offers to you if you obey it. If, if you obey your thoughts of anger, guilt, grievances, and attack, then you draw punishment to yourself. If you think that attack and anger and grievances is, a t is, is the way to get things done, then you are the one that experiences the pain and punishment that goes with that attitude. It says right here, right here. It says, by obeying the ego's harsh commandments, you bring its condemnation on yourself and you will not escape the punishment. You won't escape the punishment that your anger, guilt, and grievance and your egos offer, your ego offers to those who obey it. When you obey your ego, when you obey your thoughts of attack, when you obey your thoughts of fear, when you obey your thoughts of condemnation, then you bring punishment to yourself. You bring pain to yourself. So the part of your mind that's full of anger or guilt or grievances or depression or upset, the Course in Miracles says that part of your mind rewards fidelity to it with pain because faith in faith in your negative thoughts, faith in your fearful thoughts, faith in your thoughts of being separate from God, having faith in your thoughts that you are not enough, not lovable, faith in those kinds of thoughts, the Course in Miracles says that is pain. Faith in the ego is pain. Whenever you are experiencing pain, you could say, right now I'm having faith in my fear. Right now I'm having faith in my guilt. Right now I'm having faith in what the world teaches. Right now I'm having faith in something that is not true. I'm in pain. Right now I'm having faith in something that's not true because I'm in pain. Whenever you're in pain, you're having faith in the ego. Whenever you are going through pain, you believe in you are separate from God. Whenever you're going through any kind of pain, you believe you are separate from God. You are not separate from God. You are not separate from God. You are not separate from love. But faith in ego is pain. Faith in fear is pain. Faith in guilt is pain. Faith in separation is pain. Faith in lack is pain. Faith in attack is pain. So you can't say you're not having some faith in something that's not love. You can't say that you are 100% full of love and you're experiencing pain in your perception. According to the Course in Miracles, faith in the ego is what's causing pain. Believing in what the world teaches is what's causing pain. And faith can be rewarded. Faith can be rewarded. But do you know how faith is rewarded? Faith is rewarded in terms of the belief in which the faith was placed. You are going to get the fruits of whatever you have faith in. 
you're going to get the results of whatever you believe in, whatever you have faith in, whatever you believe in, whatever you have faith in, whatever you have believed in, whatever you believe in, you're going to get the rewards of that. If you believe in racism, you're going to get the experience of racism. If you, ex if you believe in oneness and caring and loving, then you're going to be rewarded. You're going to be rewarded in terms of the belief in which your faith is placed. You are going to be rewarded in terms of what are the beliefs that your faith is placed. Because faith makes the power of belief. So your belief has no more power than your faith in that belief. That belief has no more power than the faith you have in that belief. So if you have belief in love, it has no more power than the faith you have in the belief in love. If you have total faith in negative things and negative thoughts and fearful feelings and angry feelings and uh, grievances because of what you think somebody did to you in, in the past, then, then your faith is going to make the power of your belief. And wherever you have faith, whatever you have faith in, wherever your faith is invested, wherever your faith is invested, in whatever your faith is invested, that determines the reward. You're going to get the reward of what your faith is invested in. You are receiving the rewards of what your faith is invested in. So what do, what is it that a person gives their faith to? What is it that every person gives their faith to? Every person gives their faith to what is treasured. Whatever you treasure, that's what you will give your faith and belief to. So the Course in Miracles says, you want to know what a person has faith in, really? What a person has faith in is what is treasured. Whatever you're treasuring, that's what you're, that is what you have faith in. Whatever you value, whatever you treasure, that's what you have faith in. Whatever you value, whatever you treasure, that's what you have faith in. It says it right here on the page. For faith is always given. Faith is always given to what is treasured. What you treasure is what you have faith in. And what is treasured is returned to you. So what is life going to return to you? What is it that your relationship is going to return to you? What is it that your job in every situation in your life, do you know what every situation or relationship or every person in your life is going to return to you? They're going to return to you what you treasure. What is treasured is what is returned to you. So what will be returned to you? What you treasure. So I have two questions for you. <clears throat> what do you treasure? What do you treasure? What do you treasure? What do you treasure? What do you value? What do you treasure? What do you put your time and attention into? What do you think about? What do you have faith in? So what do you treasure? So the first question is, what do you treasure? The second question is, how much do you treasure it? What do you treasure and how much do you treasure what you treasure. What do you treasure? How much do you treasure it? What do you treasure? And how much do you treasure it? What do you treasure? And how much do you treasure it? Ask yourself this question right now. Ask yourself this question. What do I treasure and how much do I treasure it? What do I treasure and how much do I treasure it? What do I treasure and how much do I treasure it? What do I treasure and how much do I treasure it? What do I treasure and how much do I treasure it? What do I treasure and how much do I treasure it? What do you treasure and how much do you treasure it? What do you treasure and how much do you treasure it? Because whatever you treasure, that's what's going to be returned to you. Whatever you treasure. So if you're wondering what you're treasuring, what is life returning to you right now? What are you experiencing what is coming to you. Whatever is coming to you is what you treasure, whether you know it or not. Whatever is coming to you is what you treasure, whether, 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 whether. Whatever is being returned to you right now in your life, 
whatever has been returned to you in your experience, that is what you treasure. Doesn't matter what you say you treasure. What is being returned to you in your perception, what life is giving you is what you treasure. Faith is always given what is treasured. And what is treasured is returned to you. It's right here on the page. Faith makes the power of belief. So your belief has no more power than what you have faith in. Your belief has no more power and there's only love or fear. So you either have faith in love or you have faith in fear. You either have faith in oneness or you have faith in separateness. You have either faith in oneness or you have faith in separateness. You have either faith in innocence or you have faith in guilt. And whatever you have faith in, that is what's going to have the most power. And what you have faith in, what you treasure is what you have faith in. And what you have faith in is what you experience most of the time. So if you are experiencing fear or worry or upset, then that is what you are treasuring. If you focus on that all the time, then that's what you're treasuring and that's what is returned to you. Remember what I'm saying. Remember what the Course in Miracles is saying. Remember what the Course in Miracles is saying. It's much more important that you remember what I'm saying from A Course in Miracles than it is that you understand what I'm saying from A Course in Miracles. It's not so important that you understand what I'm saying. It is not so important that you understand what I'm saying. What's important for you to do is to remember that faith is always given to what you treasure. And what you treasure is what's going to be returned to you. If you are a person that's constantly angry with people and condemning people, then you are feeling guilty about something. You got some guilt you need to let go of. It's something you think you've done wrong. And that's why you're giving everybody else such a hard time and you're so angry with everybody else. It's because you have some unconscious guilt and anger. And so you are attacking yourself and you are calling for punishment on yourself because whatever you want for that other person that you're condemning, is actually what you are asking the universe to give you because giving and receiving is the same. So what do you treasure and how much do you treasure it? Do you treasure innocence? Do you treasure joy? Do you treasure oneness? Do you treasure peace? Then it's going to be returned to you. It's going to be returned to you. All right, the next paragraph, let me tell you something. I'm so glad I'm going over this right now. I am so glad that I'm giving, I'm so glad that I'm getting, being given the opportunity to remember this right now by giving it to you. See, I'm giving it to you. I'm treasuring a course in miracles. I'm treasuring a course in miracles. I'm treasuring love. I'm treasuring oneness. I'm treasuring you. I'm treasuring me. And what I treasure is what's going to be returned to me. What you treasure is going to, re to be returned to you. What you treasure, what you have faith in, is what's going to be returned to you in your perception. So what is it? What is the only thing that the world can give you? What is the only thing, the one thing that the world can give you? What is the one thing that the world can give you? Well, it says it right at the beginning of paragraph three. I'm in the Course in Miracles text, the Course in Miracles Foundation for Inner Peace version. I'm in chapter 13, section nine, paragraph three. The world can give you only what you gave it. The world can give you only what you gave the world can give you only what you gave it. The world can give you only what you gave it. The world can give you only what you gave it. The world can give you only what you gave it. The world is giving you only what you gave it. What? That's startling. That's hard to believe. 
I'm having a lot of resistance right now to what you're saying, Earl Per D. I know the world is giving me some things that I haven't given. I know the world is giving me some things that I haven't gave. I know you believe that, that the world may be giving you things that you haven't gave. But I'd like to share with you that you're wrong. Your perception is incorrect. The world is always giving you what you've given. The world can only give you what you gave it. Why is it that the world can give you only what you gave it? Why is it that the world can only give you what you gave it? Because the world being nothing, the world is your own projection. What does it mean when I say to you, the world is your own projection? Your world is your own projection, is your world is your only, your world is your own projection. Your world is your own projection. Your world is your projection. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the, your world doesn't have any meaning. Your world doesn't have any meaning apart from the meaning you found in your world. I'll say it again. Your world doesn't have any more meaning than the things you give meaning to. Everything in your world is a reflection of what you have placed your faith in. Everything you are seeing and experiencing in your world is a reflection of the meanings that you are giving to whatever you see and experience. The world can give you only what you gave it. For being nothing but your own projection, the world has no meaning apart from what you found in it and placed your faith in. If you are faithful to darkness, if you are faithful to fear, if you are faithful to anger, if you are faithful to the idea that you're separate from God, if you are faithful to the idea that you are guilty or bad or sinful, then you are putting your faith in darkness, putting your faith in fear and guilt and separation is to put your faith in darkness. So if you believe in separation, attack, grievances, guilt, fear, racism, anger, all those things, then you have faith in darkness and you will not see. Have faith in fear and you won't see. Only believe in what happened in the past and you won't see the beauty that's in front of you and the blessings that are in front of you right now. Be faithful unto darkness and you will not see. Be faithful to darkness and you won't see. Be faithful to the past and grievances and anger and fear and unforgiveness and you will not see because your faith will be rewarded in terms of where you gave your faith. Your faith is going to be rewarded according to what you put your faith in. It says it right here on the page. Be faithful unto darkness and you will not see. Because when you put your faith in fear, anger, separation, darkness, the past, the Course in Miracles says you will not see. Why won't you see if you put your faith in darkness? Because you're going to receive whatever you put your faith in. If you put faith in suspicion and mistrust and hate, then that's going to be your reward. That's a universal law. That is a rule. Listen to me now. Guess what? You will accept your treasure. Whatever you have faith in, whatever you desire, whatever you want, you will accept that because that will be your treasure. And if you placed your faith in the past, if all you think about is the past and all you focus on is what's gone, and you put all your attention on what happened to you and when you were a child or, with, or in your last relationship or even what happened yesterday or this morning. 
if you put your faith in the past, the future will be just like it. If you put your faith in the past, your future will be like your past. If you keep believing in every fearful negative thing that you think you went through in the past, then your future will be just like that. I'm just being straight up with you because I want you not to suffer. I'm telling you exactly what the Course is saying. I'm a messenger. A minister is a messenger. A minister is a messenger. But a minister of God, according to the Course in Miracles, a true minister is a messenger. But first and foremost, the messenger of God has to accept the message for themselves and then give it away. So I need to accept that when I feel guilty, I'm condemning and judging. I need to remember that whatever I treasure, that's what I'm going to receive. And I have to remember that if I obey the idea that I'm sinful or guilty of what the world teaches me about not being lovable or not being valuable, then I'm going to experience that because whatever I have faith in, that's the reward that I'm going to receive. Don't forget that. Remember that. Whatever you hold dear, you think is yours. So what is it that a person really thinks is theirs? A person really thinks anything that they treasure, anything that they really hold dear, the Course in Miracles says you're going to think is yours. The power of valuing will make whatever you really hold dear yours. So if you want something to be yours, truly yours, then you want to value it. You want to treasure it. If you want love to be yours, if you want freedom to be yours, if you want God, truth, peace, and happiness, and joy to be yours, you must value it. The power of valuing will make it so. So what makes something so? Valuing it. Whatever you hold dear, you think is yours. Whatever you hold dear, you think is yours. The power of your valuing will make it so. So I'll say it again. What do you value and how much do you value it? What do you value and how much do you value it? Whatever you value, the power of valuing it will make it yours. Okay, I'm going to do a quick recap in just a minute of what I've covered so far. I'm a full-time teacher, and if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, a donation, I would really appreciate that. Go to www.earlpurdy.com, and you can make a donation. P-U-R-D-Y. If you use Venmo, Venmo, my email address is earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. And, and I also am on Cash App if you have that. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate you. I'm available for one-on-one -on -one mentoring, coaching, and advising using the, these teachings of A Course in Miracles and every other metaphysical spiritual thing I've studied and learned in the last 40 years. I'm proud to say that I've been a full-time higher consciousness personal growth, soul purpose, astrologer, numerologist for over 45 years. And so I'm also able to bring that perspective into whatever we do, if you're open and receptive to it. So go to my website and look on the Clarity Sessions and it will explain my services in detail and you can self-book an appointment with me right from my site. Okay, I have hundreds of classes, audio and video on my website that you can watch for free. I'm also on all YouTube and I'm also all over Facebook. You can watch, please share my videos and share my classes. My live classes can be watched on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. You wanna follow that page, subscribe to that page. The Earl Purdy page on Facebook. On Thursdays, I do hardcore practical application course in miracles at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, 7 p.m. Mountain Time on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. 
And on Sundays at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, I do A Course in Miracles right here together with you. And my emphasis, I'll say it again, as a teacher of the course, I do the course, I try to teach the course the way the course says it should be taught, which is without analyzation, but with trying to hear what it's saying, remember what it's saying, and then use the ideas. Even if you don't understand it, even if you don't welcome it or accept it, just say what it says, say, and do that consistently and watch what happens in your experience. The answer, God's help is easier than your help. The things you try to do to help yourself, actually, it's asking much more of you than what the Course in Miracles is asking of you to give you even better results. All right, here we go. Yeah, oh, I needed to hear this today. Okay, so the first thing that we heard was that the only thing that has God from you, the only thing that has love from you is guilt. And whenever you feel guilty or make yourself feel guilty, then you're attacking yourself. You're punishing yourself. You're punishing yourself. And when you and don't you know that when a person starts to condemn other people, you can say to yourself, oh, that joker right there, that person right there is really feeling guilty about something that they think they've done because now they're coming home or now they're trying to raise hell with somebody else and condemn somebody else. So the first thing I know is this is a person that's guilty. They think that they've done something wrong and they're trying to take it out on everybody around them and they're projecting it onto everybody around them. Remember, when you obey the rules of fear and anger and guilt, the rules of the world, the Course in Miracles says these rules are just going to bring pain and they're going to bring punishment to it, to you because so much of what the world teaches is about vengeance and attack and condemnation. So do you want to free yourself? Well, how do you free yourself? You've got to let new rules. you got to learn new rules. you got to learn the laws of God, the laws of love, the Course in Miracles it is full of new rules, new ways of looking at things. See, if there, there are, you have to look at things another way. And you don't have to make up that new way to look at things. In order to be free, you don't have to make up, you don't have to come up on your own with the new way to look at things. A Course in Miracles is full of the new ways to look at things. The Course in Miracles is full of new ways to look at things. So if you study and practice the Course in Miracles or any wisdom text, it will give you the thoughts that you need to think. So if you stop doing what makes you feel guilty and start defi stop defining yourself as guilty, if you release your guilt, it will be the undoing of the ego. It will be the undoing of your separation from happiness in God. So make no one fearful. Don't try to make anybody feel guilty. Stop trying to make people feel guilty. And anger is usually an attempt to make somebody feel guilty. So if you want to be free from punishment and pain and lack and sickness, stop trying to make anybody else feel guilty. Guilt is not the answer. Love is the answer. The truth is the answer. So you want to realize that your faith is going to make the power of your belief. And whatever you treasure, whatever you have belief in, that's what's going to be returned to you. And what you give is what you're asking for. What you give is what you are asking for. What are you giving? What are you giving all day? What are you giving? Are you giving thoughts and expressions of peace and joy and love? Or are you giving a lot of anger, guilt, and grievances and attack? But ask yourself if you are this angry person most of the time and upset most of the time. So... It means you're treasuring pain. It means you're treasuring guilt. And you don't want to treasure that because whatever you treasure is going to be returned to you. And I treasure love and I treasure peace and I treasure God and I treasure abundance and I treasure joining and I treasure happiness and I treasure support. That's what I treasure. And I'm treasuring it as much as I possibly can, especially you, especially God. So we're going to continue in this section. So read this section, The Cloud of Guilt. It's a very powerful section. Listen to this and watch this at least four times because it's about remembering, 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 using the ideas and remembering. The Course in Miracles has a tendency to create amnesia in people. You will listen to this and hear me so clearly, and then as soon as the class is over, you may find yourself completely forgetting about it, forgetting about everything that I covered and everything that I said. I call it miracle amnesia. That's that ego. That's the part of you that doesn't want you to know your innocence and be free. It's trying to make you forget all the loving thoughts that you've received today. Remember, don't forget. Mighty companions, I'm Earl Raj Purdy, and, it's, and I'd like to say it's been an honor 
to be a witness to your innocence. We do make mistakes. Nobody's saying we don't make mistakes, but mistakes are for correction. Do you know that mistakes are for loving correction, not punishment? You don't deserve punishment. You deserve healing, help, and correction when you do or say something unloving. Whatever you treasure, that's what's coming and going to be returned to you. So treasure love, treasure truth, treasure what's real. And I love you. May the course be with you. That was page 260 in the Course in Miracles text, the Foundation for Inner Peace version, the Cloud of Guilt.